Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about custom channel blockers. We have two groups, the dihydropyridines, which are the medications ending with the suplex dipine, and the non-dihydropyridines, which are diltiazem and verapamil. Calcium causes contraction of the blood vessels and the heart. The dihydropyridine group blocks the calcium channels in the vessels, so it decreases the vascular resistance and decreases blood pressure. The non dihydro group block these calcium channels in the heart and they decrease the heart contraction. To remember all the indications, I remember the word sharp. S for subarachnoid hemorrhage, and for that we use nemodipine. If a patient ever gets stroke or subarachnoid hemorrhage, usually a week or so after the stroke, the patient will have severe vascular spasm in the cerebral vessels, which will result in the second stroke. So we prevent this using nimbutipine. H for hypertension, emergency or urgency. A for atrial fibrillation, and for that we use verapamil. R for Raynaud's phenomena. And P for Prince metal angina and other anginas as well. For side effects, the dihydropyridine group can cause gingival hyperplasia, edema, and flushing. The gingival hyperplasia is caused by both groups, however it's more prominent with the dihydropyridine group. And the edema is caused by dilation of the precapillary arterioles. We can counteract this edema by giving ACE inhibitors or angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, which will cause dilation of the postcapillary vessels. The non dihydropyridine group, especially verapamil, causes hyperprolactinemia, which presents as gynecomastia and decreased libido, also AV block, which presents as decreased heart rate, and constipation. And here's a small quiz. So, which of these medications also cause gingival hyperplasia? Other than calcium channel blockers, we have cyclosporine and phenytoin. Alright guys, that's all I have. Hopefully this helps and I'll see you guys later.